Did you read the minutes? I noticed there were two things. One thing I was on that I shouldn't be on, and one thing that I should be on that I wasn't. It just under the chair report, it says um, Sue, Marilyn, Jen, and Lily will be meeting to work on blah, blah, blah. It should be Sue, Marilyn, Molly, and Lily. Yeah. Oh, page two. I keep forgetting. I thought that was a memory lapse on my <laughs> part. Wow. Yeah, I volunteered for you that. You weren't actually there. <laughs> okay. And then the other one was, um, let's see. Oh, Jen, Jay, and Molly will finish the changes to wrap up the recommended fee cut. I think just, just you and Jay. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it was Marilyn, because Marilyn oh. was going to be oh, submitting yeah, yeah, that yeah. language, which she did. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. About the um, air. So, yeah, so that should be Jen, Jay, and Marilyn. I don't have a video, though. I hate them. Right. Yeah. Motion to approve as amended. I have a very small question under my job. Prepare, including location for 10 to 20 trees, and with 10 to 20 trees for read on one of the other. I'm sorry, what I don't know. What page are you on? What are you looking at? Under wrap, last page. Yeah, last page. I'm just making sure that. Prepare, prepare for the November 4th, including location for 10 to 20 trees. These are the the, the ones that you already have. Or, already did, yeah. These are the same trees as that were done for last spring, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Wait, I, you know, what was November 4th? That's when we're uh, thinking we're going to plant. Uh, that's, that, is that the South Street planting? Yes. Yeah, is that include yeah. 10 to 20 trees? Well, yeah. 20. It's 20 plus trees, yeah. But that's fine. Bye. I just wanted to make sure there weren't other trees. No.
Okay, chair report. I, I don't have much to report that isn't already included in the, in the upcoming agenda items. Um, the only thing that I did was, Rich, I, I got that email from this fellow, Matthew Burson, about Florence Fields trees. Is that in our jurisdiction? It's in the Parks Department. Oh, okay. So is that? There was mulch on those trees a few years ago, yeah. but they've kind of come by the wayside. And he's concerned that, that they might be getting new whacked. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I don't have a further chair report. You're up. I would love to ask you, yeah. has, uh, did you attend the Ad Commission meeting? I did. Want to talk about that? Sure. So I, I, uh, Willie and I, both, I think Willie actually did really receive the email first when I was CC on, uh, the Ag Commission met last night and, uh, they're basically a commission of, I think seven folks, but I tried to count them at the table and there were more people, so I couldn't question it, but I think it's seven just like this commission. And uh, their responsibility is to promote uh, agriculture uh, throughout the city uh, and also create a liaison. They are like a giant liaison between the folks that use the meadows. So, um, and other farms that are all kind of spread out through the city. So I was there for two reasons. One was trees. Um, they are inquiring about the location of public shade trees versus large farm equipment harvesters that have been actually trying to access the meadows and are potentially going to run into conflicts with public shade trees. Um, and also public shade trees that do exist in the meadows because some of the meadows are public uh, roadways. So I handed, uh, handed out some information um, about the, to explain what the role of the tree board was at GL Chapter 87. And, um, how it, uh, actually, I got those flyers from the PCR's website. Um, and they, um, so they were, they were satisfied. They, I guess they, you know, they, it was mainly an educational piece, I think, because they were really looking to figure out who do they contact if and when there is a conflict or a potential conflict going to happen with a tree, moving heavy equipment, you know, cutting instead of ripping a branch off a tree or taking it upon themselves to cut it off, you know, who do they contact? So that was established. Um, so what the end result is, that piece is that I'm going to work with uh, Joseph Rogers, who is uh, works for the planning department. Uh, I'm going to put together some kind of a cover letter with him that will be uh, mailed out to the farm. They have list some type of a mailing list serve for local farms to actually give them the information about public shade trees and potentially avoid any kind of conflicts. So when I was there as the highway superintendent in regards to uh, truckload signage. So it was, it was nice to us. Most of the people I knew um, from working in the city for so long, so it was nice to make a connection. So I'm gonna, I sent Joe Rogers the information this morning, uh, the flyers. <coughs> um, and what about Forbes Library trees? Did they started coming down? They're down. Oh, wow. Was they coming down by all four? Yeah, they're all, they're, they're gone. Wow. Okay. The stumps are there, they're gone. Uh, I've seen one, two of them are gone. So we finished that last uh, last week. So it took five days to take them down. Huh. And Northern Tree, you know, they, they're grander than they, they did. They did their work to trees in one day. It took us the rest of the days to actually take the trees down. Plus Stumps to grind, uh, which are in the process of making the stump grinder uh, all for one on tracks to make our life a little easier. And I also do soil samples of the front of the campus to kind of figure out what the pH is. And it's really the soil of it is really not, I mean, it's oaks will probably grow in it, no problem, but I just want to, it's so hard, it's hard to rock. The problem is I want to aerate it because we have a deep tying aerator, but they have a irrigation system. Oh. So when I, Matt, I, I um, met with the trustees the last time. I questioned them why they don't use the irrigation system. I said, because the water, the water costs.
cost money to get a water bill. And I recommended that they put a turn the irrigation system on because it actually would not only be beneficial for the front lawn, but it would be beneficial for the trees. So I, that's up for discussion. So when we go to plant them, we'll obviously water them like we do the water in the next, next year until they figure that out. Will you be able to aerate the soil? Or is it not? Without the irrigation system being on, probably not, because we'll end up doing more damage to the irrigation system. We'll smash all the heads. Oh, so if it was on, you could see? Yeah, we, if it was on, we could just turn the system on and mark the flag and just go around them. Oh. Uh, and I prefer not to damage there, because we drove all over there. Can you can you turn them on temporarily? It's yeah. all disconnected. It hasn't run for uh, years. Oh. So it's, it's mothballed, so it would be be turned out to be a real mess because if it wasn't uh, blown out properly when yeah, it was last so used, it's cracked. Oh. So I couldn't open a Pandora's box by asking them to do it. So I'd oh. rather have them turn the system on in the spring and figure out if it works and fix it, and then we can aerate it at that point if I can get the to agree to it. Okay. So. We probably get some kind of smart watering device too to, you know, help them have it go on. It, it was part. On, it was know? part. I think it was part of the. Renovation. Oh, so it should be new. It's not that old, oh. so it probably has something has like that, that built yeah. in. So those are done, and we have just been going like gangbusters doing removals. Good. So we're Great. just trying to stay on top. A lot of them, unfortunately, are not removals that are actually worth I mean, There were some that are in tree keeper, but a lot of them are just trees that have died this year. So, or the last year, that tree, that Davies said the trees were fair to, to pour yeah. fit for treatment and turn out to be removed. So right. Right. And we're going to have more. Yes, unfortunately, we're going to go all winter, I think, uh, unless, you know, as soon as the snow flies. But even then, I think we're going to try to stay as long as it's not too cold. We're going to try to keep the tree as long as possible. But I mean, a lot are declining now and probably yes. won't come back in spring. Yeah. Um, anything else? No, and I've actually been just doing a lot of data entry, uh, trying to get supposed to give a presentation today about the amount of plantings that we've done and actually show you on a map but we don't have a map and I'm not quite finished with the data but it's uh, what I did is I in tree keeper I set up a, a, a quick tab it's called the tree planting 2017 which actually you can just click on the tab and what it does it highlights every single tree we planted this year oh, cool. as I've entered them and so you can actually kind of get an idea of looking at the map exactly where we planted is that only on your end? It's a good question. I don't know. I can find that out for you. Well, I can also just look to yeah. I have a feeling it is, because that sounds like an internal project name. But we'll Yeah, we can, we can figure it out. So, and that's really about it. We're, I guess we can talk about the tree planting. So I will, I will add your presentation to the next agenda. <coughs> I'll bring my slide projector if you give me a heads up. If, if we don't have anything set up by then. I'm hoping that it's here. It's in the building somewhere. Okay. All right. Well, I'll make a note to myself and I'll check in with you. Um, it uh, is not done today, it will be done by the next meeting. And I just want to, uh, three things real quickly. The, I, I submitted the amended um, acknowledgments, right? Right. And then the one that was on his Google, it was on a Google yeah. document. Yeah. Yeah. The last one that I got sent. Not you. You don't want it. Not the one that was sent as a as a document, but the one that was on a Google Doc. Remember, I, I sent you an email that said very specific. Yeah, yeah. What, you had comments on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah that's the one. That got it. Yeah. Okay. And then um, uh, I did eliminate the Amber Mabel that was on the I think I think list. And uh, the info on the Chinese hemlock that we got is more on. It's not on the. It's on like. Like the I'm like really yeah. So I just said the need to blank. And yeah. Once we get information, we'll get information. They did say it's probably very similar. Similar, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's I, yeah, that's what. Except like. the adelgid part. Right. Is it not susceptible to adelgid? Correct. Oh. But it's hard to get. I don't think it's. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I just it did a study two years ago to find yeah. out that it was resistant. Uh, I can. Uh, I go to filter. So uh, I think that was. Nice. Great. I think those were the three. Yeah. So it's in process. So it'll be done. She tried to have it done today. Just couldn't finish it. Because so. okay. the repagination take every time you have to repaginate it. Yes. Yes. So, and then uh, I'll let you know what, she'll send it to me as a PDF, and then I'll um, find out what program it's in, it's in graphics programs. So just okay. for, you know, she said she's totally willing to keep amending it or doing whatever she needs uh -huh. to do with it over time, but I just think it'd be good if somebody else knew, like, what what the document's in and, like, where to store it or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so she okay. leaves. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. If anyone else has that program, maybe her to send it. It's a pretty. I think it's a common. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the final. I'm assuming once we get a, the final draft and it's, it's approved, it's final format, we're going to want to print. That's print the last copy so we can have that go to the printer. <coughs> yep. And and distribute it to the right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So, so as soon as I get it, I'll send it send, to you, and, and I'll we distribute it broadly, and mm -hmm. then. We're going to plan on approving this thing in finished form next Sunday. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Nice. Good. All right. Planting plan subcommittee report. Um, I I summarize it, Marilyn. You're, uh, if you want to, you want to read what I summarize. You're welcome to, or I can, I can do it. Whatever. Molly. Okay. Well, um, Lily, Molly, Sue, and I are on this subcommittee and Molly, Lily, and I met on Friday evening. Um, so we've made a lot of progress and we're actually going to meet every week on the off weeks of our commission meetings to keep it going. So we're working on a running four-year list of priority streets, sections of streets based on public benefit criteria and we really spent a little bit of time uh, discussing what those criteria are and neighbor do you want to say more yeah, i was just going to say that yes we we went through kind of first iteration of what the public benefit criteria are and probably next week we'll next time we meet we'll be ready to present them in a more fleshed out form yeah today's meeting we just sort of want to give a recap and we'll have something more detailed uh, at our next meeting um, the neighborhood planting project. Um, I'm working on an online application and using the um, using some pre-existing um, materials from other organizations to not have to read the wheel on that. Um, and we thought it might be a good idea on Arbor Day to do certain plantings at community centers, be that um, uh, low housing income areas or veteran home areas or just special communities where we want to honor and just make sure that they're included in our, in our plan. Well, that also includes around, so it's not just at a community center, think very broad definition. Don't think a community center, like the senior center, think any school or the a place, hospital. A place where people a come. Place, a place where people the, gather. People go to. So, yeah. so, you know, generally speaking, we thought we'd have a five-pronged approach to how we create a long-term planting plan. And one of them is a special Arbor Day plant that, that is more, <coughs> you know, cluster. And the fourth prong is, um, we thought in terms of uh, the wards in the city and like we're really trying to be very inclusive and not leave, leave folks out. So uh, if we do seven plantings per ward, um, if certain parts of the city aren't included in these other criteria, then it, at least we know that um, each ward is gonna perhaps get a certain number per year. Can I just say a little bit more about yeah. that? So right now, what we've got is we've got an online request. Someone can can go to a, to um, our website online and, and request a tree. 
And so we could get all our requests from one board. And that means we're only meeting the needs, we're not meeting the needs broadly. So what this would do is would say, we have a cutoff of a maximum of, of through this mean of online request, we have a maximum of seven trees per ward. And so that means that um, once like we have 10 requests from ward two, we satisfy the first seven of them, and the next three can go on a waiting list for the next year, or we can direct them to some of the other ways in which we're planting trees in their world. But it would also force us to do some more promotion in those words that rarely request or, um, you know, that, that are, is much on our radar. Okay, and then lastly, um, as we've discussed at other meetings, really focus on the downtown tree planting um, and have certain, certain areas where we actually remove um, the hard top, the hard scape, and add structural soil, and that would include five trees per year. So in addition to downtown planting, really work on just having more green infrastructure and get rid of some of that um, hard scape. I wanted, so, to, I wanted um, your feedback on that, Rich. So this is this is just we're at early stage of, of brainstorming here, and and this is. This was one way we, we thought to go about it, which is a multi-pronged approach. And um, downtown is very special in that there are very few existing sites. So we thought we would set a goal for ourselves to say five trees a year, we would actually identify hardscape that we want to pull up and plant trees with structural soil. And I didn't know if that's too ambitious, you know, not ambitious enough, just right. Well, I think that if sort of structural soils has to be installed by a certified or certified installer, so that's one issue we'll have to try to get around. But I don't see it. One thing I can say is that I think if we're going to do that, we have to we have to plant the trees in a place that we know the trees are going to stay for the last. And I think it's kind of important to work with. Uh, take up some cement to do that. Yeah, that's, that's the yeah. whole idea. You have to take up I'm cement, and the other thing, too, that you could actually work into this, too, is that you can take up the cement, take up the hard band, replace with structural soil, and then also replace the top with a uh, flexi bay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have a permeable, walkable, ADA-compliant surface mm -hmm. that could be part of that five tree plant. I mean, that, they did that one flexi bay piece uh, by the tattoo shop, and I think it's really is that permeable too? It's permeable, yeah. You can put a glass of water on it, pour it on it. Where is it? Where is it? Front, yeah. of, the, front of the tattoo shop. The Night Owl's tattoo on Pleasant Street? Yeah, on the corner of it Strong. Used to be gas station? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. yep. oh. They say that you don't have ice yeah. issues in the winter. No. Then what? Ice won't build up on it. Oh. It'll seep through before yeah. it has a chance to form. Wow. So it's it's really, I mean, I think that would be, you know, as we are, yeah. these projects are going through the tip of trying to their engineering to make sure that they you know require structural soil they require flexibility because it's really it's wonderful to do that but if we're not going to actually have a, a finished product that's actually going to last right, um, which is really kind of replace what we already have so i think it is doable i think it's just picking the right locations and, yeah. and finding out um, you know do we have to can some in our department go and actually learn how to be a certified installer or do we hire a contractor to do that work and we plant the trees afterwards? So I would love people's initial feedback. I mean, so going going through this one more time, just in summary, obviously you see the bulk of the trees would be this running four-year list. So I'm thinking in four years we want to plant a thousand trees. We want to do it as strategically as possible. And I'm I think in terms of a four-year cycle, because that's how long our mayoral term is. 
And if David is reelected as mayor, then I think we've got a very sympathetic administration on our side, and we need to make the most of it, and we need to be the most strategic about the trees that we're going to plant. So um, the bulk of it is identifying those streets are, that are the highest priority based on a, a number of criteria that we have you know, discussed in the past and we'll present them with you next week. So that's, that's number one. Again, number two is then this once a year neighborhood planting project where we actually put out um, the word that we accept applications. There'll be an online application form that will ask you know, a bunch of questions. Do you, have a, do you have a group leader? Are you prepared to do a, uh, a potluck meal? That seems to be, we looked at three different models for, for community, communities that do neighborhood tree plantings. Casey Trees, Washington, D.C., Tree Tenders in Philadelphia, and the Amherst Ants model, and they all do some kind of a neighborhood potluck. So there's a real community building component to it. Um, so anyway, then we would, uh, based on criteria, we would select a neighborhood, and that would be the neighborhood that year that would get a neighborhood tree planting. So that's number two. Number three is Arbor Day, what we do every year. Um, but, you know, whether it be at, in parking lots or at schools or in front of a hospital, God, every time I pass by Cooley Dickinson, I'm just like drooling at the potential to plant trees on that, on that space. Um, and then these ad hoc requests, we always want people to be able to say, I want a tree in front of my yard. And we, you know, we may be able to satisfy them this year, we may even be able to satisfy them next year. But this is where I want people to like this all to be very transparent and on the web so that people feel like there's maximum fairness and thoughtfulness that goes into our planning. And then the last one being the downtown trees. And, and one could argue that downtown trees kind of is, they all kind of are connected, but that one specifically could be subsumed into number one. It's just that because it involves hardscape removal and structural soil and potential this plexi pave, I feel like it's a, it's a whole different sort of scale of work that needs to be separated and considered um, as special or it, it could always be demoted because it's hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so thoughts, initial feedback? Well, I just have one comment about the um, whole process of the community plantings and the uh, ad hoc plantings. Uh, at the moment, um, no one's ever turned out for a tree in our So in order to sort of we want things to all fall into a bunch of different boxes instead of clumps here and there. You're going to have to bribe the man to break it up. You're aware of that. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do a lot of promotion. Because um, generally, it takes a lot of work to get uh, what are called the online, online ad hoc requests, mm -hmm. get those trees sighted, you have to knock on a lot of doors and you have to like sell the idea of planting a tree pretty hard. So what would happen if you couldn't have them in clumps, like you could only do seven in a ward, and you had some kind of cap, you would end up, I just doubt you'd get off each ward to take seven trees, unless you did a lot of work to make that. Okay. And, and the same with the community projects, to get a neighborhood Planting project going with the black really step forward takes again you know a fair amount of work and and I think those are the best ones and I wouldn't like to see them limited just to 15 or 20 trees um, because you mean the neighborhood planting project yeah yeah uh -huh. because those are the ones that um, support the planting actual planting of the trees which we don't really have a system for doing for planting trees, except for volunteers, and that's that's the root of volunteers at this point. So, okay. would you, so in other words, you would if you limited the number of plant of plantings that they could you know, they could go to communities in, in that way, neighborhoods. You would limit the number of trees that we as a group be capable. All right. So. I, um, I do agree with you that we need to drive demand, and I'm very happy to take a, um, you know, a leadership role in that. Um, and as far as um, engaging neighborhoods, 
so the way I see it is if, if, a, if there's only one neighborhood selected per year by this process, and 15 to 20 trees is, is really, that's just a general number. If there are 25, 30 trees that are, you know, can be planted in a neighborhood, and we have the capacity to plant it, of course. Oh, oh that's per neighborhood? That's, yeah, that's per neighborhood. Um, but oh, there would only be. We would just pick one but neighborhood we'd only per year. Pick one, in the first year, you know, if it's a huge success and it's easy, we could go to two, twice a year. But what I was going to say is that if there's if there's um, if there's a, a someone who wants a tree or um, or their neighborhood wasn't selected, but we've identified on multi prong you know on prong number one that there is a, a major gateway that their that their street is near that that we're going to tree, we could invite them to support that planting. For example, on you know in South Street we got a lot of people in the South Street neighborhood to help plant along South Street. Because the, I think that my neighbors actually found that the benefit was greater along South Street. Um, because that's where, that's their walking route into town. So I think that there's a lot of ways to harness people's excitement into the projects we already identified are high priority. What I want us to do is I want us to focus on those streets that we really want to, to tree on and not secondary or third or tertiary streets that are giving us maximum benefit. That's what I would love for us to aspire to, is to be strategic in our plan. I think this is a good good guidelines and there's nothing saying you can't pull from one to put into the other like you were just saying. So I think it's a great idea. Um, I have one question. I'm assuming that an online ad hoc request. Uh, well, I believe what I heard from you and Rob at the last meeting was we're putting a hold on setback plannings until we figure out what we're doing. So, and until we figure that out, I am not considering setback plannings. I'm happy to. But I, I think my running orders were okay. we right. shouldn't we sure. shouldn't think about them until we figure this out. Or, but but I think they should be included in the this is a long term planning instrument, so presumably we're gonna work that out. So I think once you work it out and how do you I mean yeah. I, we're right. not we're not trying to prevent step out right. of things. Well it's just that you're already up to two hundred and ninety five trees. Did I do my math wrong? Well I don't right it is two hundred and ninety five trees, I think. So um, roughly. Yeah, well, so I, I, I those are also like this is number. all the beginning of right, but that's what that the setbacks, right? And so, with with setbacks, we're up to th my not necessarily, Rob, because the running four year list of priority streets could include a ton of setbacks, yeah, and the um, ad hoc request could also include setbacks. Well, and the neighborhood plantings could include setbacks, yeah, in a practical way. The, the, the priority streets could include some setbacks, but the majority of setback requests won't be on priority streets by far. So I just think that you just need to keep in mind that if, if you were to have a bunch of setbacks, if you were to add six, and six is setback generally, you'd be up to 300. Okay. So you just right. kind of got to put that in there. Thank you for pointing out the numbers. I'm still waiting around to see what the impact is about how and the slots are on. And I, I was supposed to reach out to Molly for a to see what other. Can you send me in for, this is a little off topic, can you send me information on flex and pay? Like sure. Just, yeah. It doesn't have, don't knock yourself out, but just something uh, to forward that on. Jen, do you have any any thoughts, people? No, this uh, it's you know it's in the beginning of I think it's a smart way to think about it, you know, and yeah. And as we long know, as there's flexibility. Yeah, I mean we'd get pretty granular. Like for example, when we talk about priority streets, so if we we'd start looking at Route Nine, Route Five, Route Ten, but then we'd be looking at sections like priority sections of those very long streets. Bridge Street. Yeah, yeah. Bridge. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
So we so as as we as we come up with those, we'll we'll bring that forward. Yeah, the devil's going to be in the details with the, especially the first two categories, I think, with, you know, as Rich has alluded to, coordinating with planning and DPW. And if we make this like an annual prioritization process, I think we're going to need to include them mm -hmm. in that meeting or process so that we clearly understand what the, you know, what the terror possibility okay. is of a certain street. And then, you know, and I mentioned this when we met with the Conway people, and it, we might be able to do it internally, but, you know, just coordinating our approach with the, the bike ped uh, plan and whatever the traffic calming plan is, and if there's any mention of uh, urban forestry and the climate adaptation plan or whatever the city did. So just making sure that our efforts are consistent with the plans that already exist and then take into um, consideration the, the real, you know, TIP projects and street infrastructure projects that have become that, like, transportation improvement, whatever. Okay. It's the state, it's yeah. the way the state doubles up the money for the okay. for, for road project. I see. Okay, good. Now that's, that's important. When I do that with you, when we get to that point where we want to look at particular streets. <coughs> yeah, you know, like, because, you know, it's not only, it's not just engineering, it's uh, planning, but also engineering, because engineering is going to be a lot of uh, potentially paving in the next, at least the next fiscal year, the next fiscal year, from what I understand. And the question is whether or not it's going to include sidewalks as well. So that's kind of a big, is that state money that comes in? That's combinations, uh, chapter 90 money, uh, bond money, and uh, money. I mean, I know this, the, the mayor leads it, but I know there's a capital improvement plan, but there really should be an infrastructure improvement plan that looks out 10 years and is tackled every year where everyone gets together and says, here's what we're doing, here's our, you know, and just make sure we're not stepping on each other's toes. Well, I think that right now, I have to say we're, we are there's a lot of projects that, that have been in the till for a long time that are just all of a sudden starting like all at once like Hankley Street um, and other places uh, for example uh, Lower Roberts Meadow Reservoir with this swimming hole is they have to rebuild a channel there so a lot of trees had to be able to do that kind of work so there's all these engineering projects that have been kind of stalled within the city that is relying upon different sources of funding or in different design phases <coughs> so uh, I know the city engineer is working with the director to map out to get that better handle on the five-year infrastructure planning and to coincide that working with the planning department and, you know, based on what their visions are and trying to, and then we kind of have to tack on, a, tack on a, our, our piece and say, okay, this is what we would like to do and how is this all going to fit in with what the larger picture is, which is what you're talking about. So it's kind of a, it's a broad conversation. I mean, I think we've been safe. We've been planting trees in safe places. Uh, older streets, streets that already have established trees, established sidewalks, established street widths, uh, no traffic calming measures, uh, the, uh, no uh, uh, pedestrian refuges being constructed. So no, no real hardscape changes, you know. When we start venturing outside of that, and start venturing into places downtown, uh, Florence Center is another good, location in a sense because it really is like barren. Um, we have to just kind of be very careful about what we're doing so the effort that we're doing is not, you know, really Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's good, it's, it's excellent, uh, excellent effort, but I think we've been planting on the safe side just because of the lack of all that much larger communication. Right. Umbrella. Well, to get to the next level. Yeah, we have to move. Yeah, I guess. I, I don't disagree. It's just a matter of getting, and I think we're fortunate because of the buy-in. I mean, I have had more people reach out to me for tree-related things citywide. I mean, the Ag Commission. I've worked here for 28 years. I never went to the Ag Commission I mean, once in my life. Never had any reason to, you know. So now you, people are getting. There's the word is out, and all the work that this commission has done, and the mayor has done, the DPW has done, is really expanded. You know, and the significant tree ordinances, the other piece of this puzzle that's also expanding. 
because of the nature of the amount of site plan review that's happening with all these different projects going on throughout the city. And the city is really moving. So it's all like supposed to move on. Well, to be continued, we're going to continue working on this very diligently or building some momentum. So um, um, we'll keep you abreast and, you know, not get too far ahead so that if um, there's a track we're going down that folks don't feel comfortable with it, you can catch us early. All right, we're going to move on to the next item. Towards stuff. <laughs> um, or if you want to talk about um, where we are in the whole traffic calming manual piece, you can do that. I don't know what that would mean. I think they're telling us we still can't see it. Go back and read the original manual and make our changes based on it. So, well, I guess on the on the ordinance, um, we kind of did we leave it with more Alan Stupol stuff? You know, uh, ordinance, I haven't supported in that until we've actually kind of. I kind of thought we were going to come back to the table and make some changes before we send it to him to whether I can send it, I can send that to him. So he's one of the wood I send him, it's just a matter of, you know, he's got a lot of his plate. So yeah. We gave you some initial feedback about it. Do you feel like you, there's enough there that you can take in? Well, and I think uh, some clarity around the setbacks, um, you know, that, that, that will be helpful as well. So I can take another crack at it based on what we know already. And then maybe it would be time to bring it down for initial review. And do you want to make a crack as well, um, since you're taking cracks at things, um, at going find the traffic calling manual? It's there on the website. It's on our time. So the one that's not updated. Yep. And just seeing where language related to trees could be fit in, both in in. Um, how priority streets may be identified based on absence or um, presence of trees. Yeah, and then, as an indicator yeah, tool. Yeah. Exactly, and then as a solution. Yeah. The only comments that um, Alan made to me about the proposed ordinance was he said it's very difficult to have an ordinance or have some regulations stand alone and not tied to some type of like you or the site plan review. He said his his concern would be is that you can tell someone now after thirty years that they own this tree that it's within so many feet of the public right away. Now it's even though it wasn't planted by the city, it is now all of a sudden a city tree. He said in reality, he said you would probably have a tremendous amount of pushback and he said you would actually have to um forgot the word the word verbiage the words you use, but it was Basically, we have to pay the individual for the tree. No, no, that's inconsistent with his own theory on the setback trees, no, which is exactly the same. But it's different, though, because setback, tree, setback trees that we plant, yeah. we plant, and there's a law that already exists. So we use the coattails of MGL Chapter 87 to do setback planning. So if, if we get private money, and I enter an agreement with the landowner to a setback, it doesn't matter whether it's private money or public money. So are you saying that his criteria is if the city plants a tree 400 feet off of right away on private property? No. Well then, well then that no. gets back to it's the 20. 20 then it gets back foot. to the 20 feet. Right, but he, you can't take a tree that's already exists that was not planted under the auspices of 87 and now make it a public shade tree without compensating the owner for the loss of the property. That's how I understood what he was saying. Actually, it kind of makes what? sense to me. It, it reminds me of like if you've got a, a house in the historic district that what is not compliant that is existing there you can't be punished for but once you make an alteration uh, you know and you have to, um, to go through permitting to do that right. then you then you have to comply with whatever the historic standards are for that neighborhood. So I, I do see a parallel you get, just because I own a house in the historic district, and so I've had dealt with that sort of thing before, where things that are existing, you know, are com currently compliant, they're grandfathered in, but whenever you have to make changes, you have to you have to pull a permit, you have to pull a uh, you have to get a 
up on the next door. I guess it's the planning department, but it's under the auspices of the next door. Yeah, so there has to be some kind of permit to trigger it. But we're not. But there's no taking because the property is it, the only the only thing the homeowner's going to do to the property is cut it down. Right, but it's not our property to begin with. That, that was his whole. That was his whole. That was the basis of the whole conversation I had. With him. He said, I right, "Well, I'm, I'm not going to spend time writing a law that he's going to say is a taking." No, I, I, that's why I, if you don't have any changes to what you drafted, I will send that to you. Unless you want to update that, go maybe go through it and resend it to me. Just in case you wanted to make any changes, and I'll forward it to him, and I'll get his comments on it. Or if you don't mind. I mean, if you know municipalities that operate differently in Massachusetts, and you can point to them, Todd, that would be helpful, I'm yeah. sure. But absent of that, I think all we can do is abide by his determination. I also am just wondering politically, this as a standalone ordinance, whether it's going to be a little bit tricky to get it through. I'm wondering if, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm just not, I've never actually successfully moved an ordinance through city council, so I don't have that experience. But um, I imagine, I, I can imagine that there would be some nervousness around forwarding an ordinance that involves yet another permit with a fee associated with it. And, you know, we just have to think about it. Bundle it in with something really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Koala bears or guinea yeah. pigs. Well, I mean, for example, the planning board could have rolled. They could have put something together when they decided to adopt the the infill housing model. The one model. The, the model of basically what they're doing now is basically in, infill housing. Right. You know, they could have actually part of the permitting yeah. part of the permitting yeah. review is that. Uh, the significant triggers will apply to this as well, yeah. not just site plan review. Yeah. So that would, you know, but the only problem with that is most of the side yards that people are building homes on have large mature trees, and the trees have to go in order to build the house. Yeah. And every house requires a driveway. So you're basically, in a sense, almost either designing the house around the trees that exist there, or you're clear cutting the lot. And it all depends upon the preference of the individual the builder. Um, this happened on Landy Avenue, for example. There was two sugar maples in a private property. I went and looked at them both. I told them they had the driveway set to the left. I said, move to the right, because this tree you're going to remove the S word, you're going to remove the tree. And I don't have any jurisdiction over it because it wasn't site plan review. I went there, they cut down both trees. And the tree on the left was a beautiful mature, uh, mature sugar maple that was off the road. So that would be a case where that type of ordinance would be beneficial but it would have to be tied to some type of other uh, regulation or some type of you know like be like a trigger like something. So like an amendment to the yeah it would be basically would say that you know you uh, you have to have an tree inventory for all the trees in your property and the trees are the same like significant tree or it's on a different playing field. Mm -hmm. You know it's another way to to try to well, could that just be uh, our effort to strengthen and expand the significant tree ordinance? It, it could. Okay. That's another, that's another time. We a conversation that can happen to find out what to do. But it would, re it would require a change. You know, that would be an ordinance. The ordinance would have to be amended to add, uh, you know, in a sense, almost like building permits. You know, building that, permits, and what about trench permits? Yeah, 12, so it's Trench permits would pick up all those driveways you're describing. Dr driveway permits pick up the driveways, trench permits. Tren uh, driveway. Because the driveway permit would have picked up the, the oak tree behind the Academy of Music, wouldn't it? Was that, did no. that require it? No. Because it's city? Yep. No, it required it. It requires a, a trench permit, but it did not require a driveway permit. Okay, so trench permits, driveway permits, 
and the new infill um, <laughs> infill projects. The, the problem with trench permits, though, is that trench permits really, for for example, if somebody wants to do a soil boring, test their soil profile. You don't need a trench permit in Massachusetts. So someone decides they want to pave their driveway up to the city right away, they don't need a driveway permit or a trench permit. Someone decides to dig a foundation to a house, don't need a trench permit. Oh. So it's, the law is very uh, defined and it's, yes, oh, so no, there's, not a lot, there's not a lot of things attached to it. Um, driveway permits are a little different because all, all driveways have to cut through the public right away. Mm -hmm. So when these new houses are being built, you know, the first thing I go and look at is, okay, what's in the way, once they stake it out, how are we going to get around this? And uh, they, they could be tied to it, but we need it. What about just a building permit? I think actually a building permit probably would, have, would be an interesting, the building permit would probably be the easiest thing. But in order to get a building permit to build a house, you have to have your driveway permit. It has to be signed off by the highway superintendent. The water and sewer availability have to be completed by the uh, water superintendent and um, the director. So then you go to get your building permit. And then you can do whatever you want within your confines of your property without any, without any, you know, without any um, repercussions of any kind. So nothing applies to that. And it doesn't rise to the level of the site plan approval. So here, the significant tree ordinance doesn't apply. So you have to amend the significant tree ordinance to say that this will include all, uh, you know, new, uh, I can say new construction or new house home construction. Uh, for example, that would picked up that house over on Crescent Street when they piled up all the soil against the yeah. city tree. Mm -hmm. So those kinds of triggers. But then the other problem is that if you decide to do this, then you have to be able to enforce it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a big you know, the building department has a hard enough time enforcing it for the building purpose to come out of their office. Well, I thought the idea would be that they would just flag any tree and then send it to you. Send that plug to you. Uh, that is yes, they typically that's what they, they try to do, but I can catch them with catch them through those those three uh, three site plan approval and signature ordinance driveway permit and uh, and I've amended the driveway permit to actually say that talk about public shade trees now that protect All right. I want us to move on, so I want to know what, what are our next steps here? Well, I think we need to clarify uh, Alan's opinion on um, how and Maybe. if Sorry. Uh, a tree within the 20 feet, within 20 feet of the right of way is or can be designated as a public shade tree. I mean, that's all, that's where we started. I mean, you guys have just taken it further by protecting all trees on an individual lot for building permit, which I wasn't the intent. The intent was to protect public shade trees as regulated by Mass General Law, which includes ones that are clearly in the public right of way and ones that are within 20 feet. Okay, so we definitely need that opinion clarified. I think so. Okay. I mean, yeah. So, so you can just amend, if you want to look through that again? Yeah, I'll make a very clear question that yep. we can deliver to Andrew. Okay. Okay. Great. Todd will make your question. <laughs> okay. Good. And you will deliver that to Alan. So after asking whether or not the city planted it for it to be helpful. No. Regardless of who planted it, who bought it, what is his opinion on, you know, how the trees within 20 feet of the right of way can be designated public shade trees as authorized by Mass General Law. assistance we want for going through the kind of planning that we've just spent the last half an hour talking about both 
where we're going to plant trees, how we're going to further protect trees, um, legislatively, that sort of thing. Um, and Conway is one source that was put in front of us as a possibility, and I and I know that they have a fairly imminent deadline on considering that, and they have a price tag associated with that. I did get an, uh, an email from CJ saying that they would be willing to cut the cost of the, pro of the project in half. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to pass that on to you. Um, but but before I, I you know I feel like our due diligence requires us to, to look at what are are there other lower cost, um, free grant fundable. Uh, uh, sources of assistance out there and ones that are potentially more professional. This is not a professional contract. It's, um, it's students who are doing a project and they would be supported by, by um, instructors, but we were even told by CJ that she, who is the only one at the school who has experience putting together a sort of a, a municipal tree plan, would not be involved. So um, I just wanted to open it up to a larger conversation. Would it make sense to start from the point of asking, what do we have to need assistance with? Right. You know, be proactive that way instead of like something coming at us exactly. and say, do you want that? Right. What do we actually need? We have our first three questions, maybe, just to give an idea of what kind of questions we may have. But you, mean, you, you mean, what are, what are, what are, we, what are we thinking? Yeah, what, anyone thinking of one or two, three things that we would ask? You mean ask them, or, or I think we should ask ourselves. Ask them. Like, what do we need? In I, I think we should take them. them out of the equation right now, and I think we should ask ourselves what what kind of assistance are we looking for, and who might be the best sources to provide that assistance. So I went through this, and I and I, it was uh, you know it's a little vague. I feel like oh we already have this information. Yeah. I mean there's a right. lot in here that I'm like wait a second we're. Already yeah, Alright, so my question is... It would be a great project for them to do, but I'm not paying. So my question is, is that list, did they bring up anything? Good question. Yes. Right, any new ideas here? Yeah. Oh, let's see. You mean like a, 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 as an inspiration of things we should be doing? Yeah, yeah, was there anything in there? Um, I mean, did, did, um, do we feel like we have a handle on all... I know Todd spent a bunch of time on this, and I don't. I, I guess I'm not clear on totally whether we figured it all out or whether it was too big of a job. Did we really go through all the ordinances and say this is where all the references to trees are? And do you feel yeah, like that's complete, or was this like, whoa, this is well, you know, what the job. what was the too big of a job was to. Um, Kind of cons consolidate it and turn it into something that um, would really reflect um, the prioritization process that we've been talking about. In other words, I, you know, so I think what we what we decided to do was kind of approach it from a separate way and have your you know the tree guide mm -hmm. as one thing mm -hmm. and then work with the planning board to adopt that across the board okay. that would replace like four different mm -hmm. tree lists that they mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. and then on the public shade tree protection ordinance we can get that somehow that would then do a lot to protect the trees that are under our jurisdiction mm -hmm. from any of the different permit and you know I, I think that would solve probably 90 percent of what Got we're it. looking at. Okay. That was my, I thought that that's what happened, but I just wanted to. I mean, that's the area that I see that we need the most support with because it's the one that we're most challenged by. <coughs> but I just don't know if this is the body to give us that support. I, I've worked with the Conway School in two other occasions close doing projects like this. One was the food security plan, the other was the Bean you know, project. A food security the food, plan? Uh, yeah, food security plan. And back then, they charged $1,000 to do these things. And there's a couple of things that I remember. One is that they it, they have a very short timeline. Mm -hmm. It is six, short. It's like six it's weeks. It's short. It's very short and very intense. So if you're not ready to jump fully into that, you know, it's like garbage in, garbage out. You, you're just not going to get, um, you're, you're, there, 
they're not gonna gather the information they need and they're not gonna be able to take that into the finished product. But the other thing is, what I remember is that the documents they create are very beautiful. Um, you know, they're design, above all, they're great, they're great designers. <laughs> um, but that's, I'm not sure that we need a beautiful document. I think what we need is to dive really deeply into some, um, you know, either ordinance issue or really get granular about where we're going to be planting. And I, I know the three of us and, and Sue too, we're already, we're already going down that road and I almost feel like having a fourth person who doesn't know the situation in there is kind of like having an intern show up at your work. Sometimes we feel like more work than <laughs> Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I know that the two documents that they created, um, the, from my experience, ended up being non-used documents. Uh, they were, the city was not happy with the outcome of the being out of their, their, their being out of even though it was beautiful, and I actually was. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the city was the, uh, client. Um, and, um, and they're done by students, so there's a little bit of naivete, like the food security plan, there was just a not, um, it wasn't grounded, in, I feel like, in the many, many nuances of the city that would prevent a lot of the ideas that they put forth from, from coming to pass. So I'm, a, I'm just a little suspicious that this is the professional body that we want to invest our resources in. You know, we could, um, we could j jump into a DCR funding cycle and make a, a grant request to have this pay f to, to pay for a, a professionally led planning piece that for me I feel like the focus on the ordinance is paramount because I feel like that's the part that's, that, that seems to be the hardest and requires the most coordination with various departments. Um, well, actually, they're, you know, they both do it anyways. But is there any, um, I mean, going back to the question of what are the tasks that we would want help with, regardless of who we're looking at? You know, are there any ways that, um, you know, data analysis, for example, like they have this example of um, percentage of impervious surfaces, you know, basically GIS analysis. Um, is there any of that that would be useful to us in terms of, you know, implementing the tree plan? Um, that would be something to think about. And also with um, with TreeKeeper, that Rich Rich has access to most of the data analysis stuff. Um, it doesn't seem like there's a way for other people to really do that, even us on the committee. So it would make sense to farm that out to somebody else, like other consultant, either. So that doesn't seem like something that we could really ask for help with. The impervious surface question is a really good one. Um, Rich, does the DPW have a way of providing us that information already? Like uh, the stormwater uh, management guy? Yes, they have the ability to do that through the charts. Right, so they better yeah. have some way of looking at it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we could get that information from the planning department or someplace. Yeah. It's just GIS data. So if we can get that done in house in the city, then we wouldn't need to get somebody else to do it. But are there, I don't know, are there other things that? I'm sure there are lots of other things, and I'm sure if we had a professional, I guess my point is if we had a professional that said, you need to think about this, 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 and this, right. then be like, let's go at it. But I've, when we just have a, a bunch of graduate students, I just don't feel as confident that they are asking the right questions. No, I agree with you. But I'm, I'm also, I actually agree about the Conway School that I don't think it's a good fit. But I'm also looking at the bigger question of, are there things we would want somebody to do? Do we even know what those things are? Or do we need somebody else to tell us what those things are that we don't even think of? It's, it seems like to me that um, you know we could always. It seems like this is too soon. You know what I mean? Even if this was a good answer, it's too soon. And we can always come up, like do our own, like figure out what, ask the questions to us. And if we feel like we're like rolling around, can't figure it out, we can find somebody else to help us lead us through the answers or something, you know, whatever that is, I don't know, consultant or just somebody that comes in for one meeting and we have a little retreat and, you know, pump out some questions. And then we can ask them, and if this, if we think the Conway School could do it, then we can ask them two years from now or a year from now, you know? That's true. 
it's not like they're, you know. So it seems to, to my, I would be in favor of just like tabling this, like saying no to them, it's not gonna really work for us right now. And then come up with, if, it, if this is a priority to figure what are the questions, then let's throw a meeting at that, or you know, and try to do it ourselves, come up with the questions. If it seems like we can't see the, get there, then what's the next step to get the questions? And then we'll say, well, okay, now at least we have the questions, what do we need help with, you know? Molly, I know you need to go. Yeah. I agree with what she said. Okay, yeah. all right, I wanna hear from everybody else because I feel like this decision we should come to together. And I also agree that I don't think Conway School makes okay. sense to okay. I think the, the one thing I think we could benefit from and our uh, future generations of tree committee people could benefit from is a dynamic decision-making platform for the prioritization of planting that that is linked to the processes that planning is going through DPW uh, and also linked to the plans that the city's already invested resources in okay. and I don't know what that looks like or what necessarily that process is off the top of my head but that is the one thing that I think we could put some resources towards um, and because it's beyond us it, it involves so many other departments and other plans that we do need a professional to come in and pull all that together into something that will help uh, future you know us and future decision makers instead of just you know right now we've been lucky because we've been able to plan and kind of the type of environments but that's gonna stop relatively quickly and we're gonna have to rely on a more scientific decision making process that we are inching towards, but we need a lot of assistance to really flush it. Okay. I appreciate that they came to us, like they took the initiative um, <clears throat> to uh, find a way that they can learn by doing and that they know well enough of our work that they see a way that they can be a benefit, not in favor of paying 7000 or even half that amount. I just don't think that's a wise use of our money. But I guess my main question is, is there any way that we might be able not to be offensive, but ask if they might like to be involved um, in a project where it's, it's not for them? I know when I was in graduate school, we did a lot of projects in the community as part of our coursework. And um, we weren't doing it for a fee. But there was a lot of benefit. I did one with the Keene Ag uh, Agricultural Commission um, and then did a presentation. So I felt like I was learning. They got something out of it. It was in conjunction with the class. So there was a lot of overall learning. So instead of just closing the door completely, maybe there's some way that we can the brainstorm on our own or with them to find out if there's a need that they could help with. Even if it's something research-based, if there's something more that we need to do with the ordinances. Okay, all right. Others? It seems to me like what we need more, like Todd was saying, is someone who understands the, how a city works, yeah. city planner, mm -hmm. maybe more than a mm -hmm. landscape designer. I, I'm happy to ask Molly Freilicher about resources for this. Like, are, you know, are there consultants out there who this is what they do? But I think we have to get some heavy duty clarification about really what are we, because I, I don't feel like. I don't, I, it's, I don't think it's committing, for. it's not committing us to anything to just start asking those oh, questions. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say it with any sort of Got definitiveness. Okay, yeah. I'd be more like just feeling things yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Right. Sounds good. Okay. Rob? Well, I, I agree that bringing another group into the mix that the same data as we have to do right now probably not be um, I, I think Jen's right that in a couple of years, we might have questions that we do need answered. So we'll leave it open for when we're when we come up against those. I mean, you know, when we talk, you know, Todd has issues about ordinances. There are things floating out there that we can, probably can't tackle if, 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 at some point. Uh, maybe even the same place. You know, but I, you could ask them a couple of years from now when we are clear. All right. So
so um, I think I'm hearing I'm hearing a couple of things. One is that we should start thinking about whether or not we can use some professional assistance. And I think Todd's making the argument that it's a good use of our resources to get professional assistance. And I'm hearing uh, some others say we this is not urgent. We can we can hold off on this a little bit. Does anyone? I don't know that we need to answer that right now. But does anyone object? me just putting feelers out to Molly to find out what other sort of resources there are out there and whether or not they're fundable by, through a DCR grant. I mean, then I can just bring that information back to you. And if anyone else has any um, sources, you know, on the career networks of planning people. But what about you, Rich? Well, I'm just reading some of the city does not currently have a policy direction for decision making regarding trees and forested areas. I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah, yeah. That's I not, didn't either. That's not necessarily true. I think this is a very broad, mm -hmm. it's almost like a, it's like a boilerplate piece, right. thank you, that you know, they're trying to basically um, get us to bite on to, which, you know, I kind of, and then you zoom out and all of a sudden it goes from being a new shit to all of a sudden like a sustainability project. You know? right. And I feel as if we are not in the place, we don't have everyone communicating with each other where we should be, which is where we have to get the buy-in from the planning department and the infrastructure work that's being done by the Department of Public Works. And then once you have all that buy-in, then you say, okay, what is our long-term goal for the city and what is our plan going to be? And that's where you would have potentially someone answer all those questions and lay a plan out there instead of individual projects and pieces right? and I kind of think that this is not unfortunately it's I like parts of it but other part I just don't I don't think it's the right time for us um, and I also think that it's too vague and I also think they'll have a hard time getting the information they need um, from the city in general to try to make this happen mm -hmm. Just because of the nature of how things operate and the amount of time they have to spend on it, I don't, I don't think this is really. This is not like a two months or three month yeah. long project. This is a good year worth of interviewing people, reviewing ordinances, um, looking over long range plans. I mean, you know, this planning sustainability is a huge document that guides the city and how the how the city is laid out in the sense of that it would take me a year. To I can't tell. This is what they do, but I, I don't think it's the right time uh, for us. Okay. All right. So um, I, I will craft a diplomatic um, decline to their proposal, and um, I, I, I'll have it if I write a draft and share it with you. Sure, that's fine. And, um, and then I will also just start putting feelers out for what other, what other sort of sources. We've got we've got um, we've got to check in with these various departments. That's I think we've got to individually let all the heads, the relevant heads, know. We've got this major inventory done. We're moving to the planning phase. We want to do it in coordination with what you're doing. Help us and just get that conversation. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, a little bit off schedule here, but we can quickly catch up. American chestnut tree planting, this can be super quick um, because, um, well, I hope it can be. But anyway, we've got a yes from Charles Park. Um, we've got a yes from Lake Fitzgerald. Um, I do not have an answer from the Gazette. I kind of hit a wall. I think I have to actually either go up in person or, or make a phone call. I, I, I was sent up the food chain, and I, I haven't gotten a reply. And then, Richard Cemetery? Yeah, I don't see an issue. I'm just, Martha emailed me back. She'd just like to review the Cemetery Preservation Master Plan to determine what section would be good to have the tree plan. Okay. <laughs> and can you tell me what her, her title is? <coughs> Delancey Archex is overseeing the cemetery for like a, a long period of time? No, no. Her, her role was to develop uh, 
through a public process to develop a uh, master plan for uh, restoration, renovation, and restoration of Bridge Street Cemetery. And now she's finished that project and now is finishing the one uh, sort of the same process through a uh, public forum process and public input for uh, uh, Park Street and West Market. Okay, and did the master plan include trees? Yes, it does include trees. It includes trees that were actually being period trees. I see. The period of the cemetery. Oh. So did she find sites? Did she identify actual locations? No, she does not identify location, but she identified tree species based upon uh, their, when they were introduced to this country. Um, that is what section of the cemetery was developed. So that's we should definitely, can we review that? I feel like sure. it should be cool. Yeah. I'd love to see that. <laughs> yeah, it's a very I don't know, kind of, is she, a, does she very knowledable? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, so it's Martha Lyon. She's, a, she's, well, she's got a, uh, she's a very interesting lady. She's been all over the England doing projects, cemeteries, uh, historical society. She's a member of the historical commission. What a niche. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. So is the fence on that cemetery staying? or no, the one on Bridge Street. Bridge Street Cemetery. For the time being, it's going to stay. It's going to stay. And, and are these trees? Going to be being planted by somebody or us? Well, with that, so the mayor, um, just kind of a sidebar to this. Okay, let's I'll, make it a quick one. Yeah. The mayor, Park Street and West Farms, once that final, uh, the, it's a draft, once it comes out in its final form, the mayor is going to sit down and review uh, the plans and try to figure out funding mechanisms for them and where to start because oh. they're costly uh, endeavors. It's, it's a lot of, uh, it's a big circumference. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's big. Park Street and West Farms are smaller, but there's, you know, there's different funding. Uh, there's different folks that can do some funding. There's uh, preservation grants available through the state and so on and so forth. So the trees, we can get the trees planted these. I just want to yeah. show you where the best okay. Right. Um, okay, so the other things I have here are, um, for the planting, we're going to need to now, is that something the city put yeah. okay. uh, And I assume some, some stakes to hold up the problem. Just um, they did suggest uh, a, 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 an amendment, a low pH amendment, right? Because they like uh, pretty acid soil. I, I I have it down and I can pass it on to you. Okay. I'll, I'll run it by you too, or any you, if you want, Jen. I'm sure they know. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then do we want to set a date for this? I mean, already we have, I mean, even if, if Gazette says no, we could do, we could do five at each site. I just got one thing. Yes. Child's Park officially closes next week. So we need to pick out sites. Somebody needs to pick out sites. Get that going quickly. How I many can do while it. there's someone there huh? to talk to while there's someone yeah. there? We could plan later. I think we can plan. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm happy for you, Jay. Okay. It would be great if, if some of them were, were visible from the street. Yeah. There are some issues with, you said the, the upper part of the park doesn't like to plant stuff up there because it's so dry that they don't have the resources to water them. Is the upper the part the M Street side? Or do you mean the up there? Up by the hospital. So I was, I was just in my head, somewhere around the pond area. Mm -hmm. uh, he was kind of reaching toward the, the YMCA corner there. But I thought if we'd spread them out as much as we can. Uh -huh. we um, I think that they want them at least two or three together though, for pollination. But how close do they have to be? Is it wind, they're wind pollinators? Chestnuts? Chestnuts? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like way back to Chestnuts. Kind of looking at that. Right? Because okay. if they do, it's probably wind if that's what it is. Uh, I can look it up. I can look it up. But. All right. So, they did they say how many? They, they could they take all four. They take four. Okay. That's all I ask. Maybe somebody else could commit to water. You know, mean if we could still plant on that upper side, maybe if we could get, you know. And like Fitzgerald would take? Yeah. 
let it say four. Okay. And Bridge Street Cemetery, I don't know. Yeah. At least four, if not six. You can say four to six if the Gazette doesn't pull through. I'm sure Trials Park could take a few more, too. Okay. Okay, so four to six. Okay, if we have four to six for those two, for all of them, then we're set. But I, it would be great. If we could take the Gazette. Okay, do we want to set a planting date for this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Marilyn says Thank yes. Thank you. and coordinate with me because I've got the trees and Bridge Ridge. And you'll do Bridge Street. I'd, I'd like to be there. Sure. I have a soft spot. It's, uh, it's uh, where we first met. I Rich. know, we did. <laughs> we did. We're we both, we both survived. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'll take on the Gazette if it comes to that. I hope it does. And do you feel like you could take on the planting of the yeah. organizing? Yeah, I'll coordinate with, yes, uh, I can coordinate with uh, the gentleman I was emailing. Okay, great. And and you probably can get volunteers from Barbara to help plan. Okay, great. Yeah, I think uh, what I don't know is the, the, the spec on how they get protected. I'm going to, um, I'm going to send the email that I have. About okay. That. It's, you're going to pick up hardware call from the next row in cages. Wait a minute, a couple of inches. The hard the harbor box. Save so the hard box. Yeah, so there's no road damage. Mm -hmm. they, do they, uh, do they hardware cloth <coughs> why don't they recommend the you know, uh, like a piece of uh, ABS pipe on the bottom? That's what I'm for the nursery stock, right? Smaller plants for mice damage. But the hardware cloth should keep the mice in it. Or put the hardware cloth cover. This put a cover on it as well. Uh I, maybe. Um, this is what? what? Three foot, four foot high one? Yeah. I've got really detailed, okay. detailed description of what to do. And it also does say, um, well drained, slightly acidic so soil. If adding some plant food, use plant food that is designed for azaleas, which also is vitamin six. So, so is Okay, so I'm sorry. In general, I don't think we have to worry about that. Okay. I know for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.
sell. Um, we're pretty much close to 200 trees, which is good. We are a little held up with some trees that need to get planted because of the, um, uh, the, the change in the wording of the agreement that we mm -hmm. missed the setbacks. And so uh, there are at least half a dozen, maybe only four trees that are sort of been paralleled at that time and the land here. At least the need to borrow Kind of, that's really the only rub, I think. Um, it's kind of this problem. Uh, other than that, uh, not too, too much to report. Rob, were you able to check out um, Florence Heights? Yeah, um, Florence Heights basically has room for four big trees, and uh, it's probably got a fair amount of salt on Florence. And so, a lot of salt. So, it's, there's a limited number of trees that you go in a small tree belt, a big tree in a small tree belt with salt. And uh, I think there's a chance that we'll, because of the way the contract's running this year, that we might actually get, we're not able to get all the trees that we contracted for because some of them weren't in good enough condition. So, we might be able to switch rich, some of the linens that we didn't get for a few London plane trees, additionally. The only London plane trees we have now are slated for South Street, so we don't want to take those. And actually put them on Florence Road this year, possibly. That's the Florence Road. Um, uh, Florence Heights. That's, that's pretty much it. That's four, four places. There's, there's an area that's cement. <laughs> so when you look on my map, you think, oh, well, there's more space, but it's got uh, What's with that? cement connected to the sidewalk. Why did they make that big concrete? Uh, they thought it was going to be a bus stop. Oh, did you just say that? The original bus stop. Oh, it's the original that bus stop. That's what we told the bus company to. All right, well, that's it. So anyway, but, you know, four London plant trees there would change the look. Yeah. 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 Y
a new project? This is a new project. So this is just a, I don't know if they've planted any trees as of yet, but they are in the process of canvassing to figure out how much fundraising they're going to need to do to meet their goals. So the mayor committed to 50 trees. Um, so that would mean that we would have 50 trees at our disposal, um, or 50, 50 trees, and the money's for 50 trees. We would pick the trees that we wanted. Oh. They, only, they only asked, yes, we're not going to take trees that they give us. That was something that made very clear that we would like to have the funding. Uh, they said, well, you just tell us where you want the money to go and we'll send it there. And the trees will Why would we say no to this? <laughs> no. So we wouldn't say no. Uh, does it involve kids? like a big placard? Or? No, what it's going to involve that each tree is going to have some kind of uh, marker in the shape of a dog tag attached to it mm -hmm. somehow that will uh, be in memory of fallen soldiers. Um, and so I think it's a great, I think it's a great program. Um, I think it, uh, the mayor was looking to try to get some planning done in the spring to coincide with the uh, Memorial Day parade, uh, Park Street Cemetery. What so, about around Veterans Day this year, or is that too soon? It's too soon, I think, Marilyn. I don't think, yeah. I don't think they have the total amount of folks that they actually reached out to. Them. Is this a 501c3, or are they moving in that direction? I think it already is. And it's called the Liberty Project? Yes, the, the, the Liberty, Liberty Tree Project. So it's based upon the original Liberty Tree. Uh, the name comes from the original Liberty Tree that was in Boston that was uh, you know, pre-Revolutionary War, or beginning of the Revolutionary War, that was chopped down by the British, yeah, because it was Liberty Tree, because all of the, the uh, So they kind of get into play in there, supposedly. Yes. Is there any way that we can have access to folks in Northampton who are veterans and reach out to them to see if they might like a tree planted in their neighborhood? We probably probably could. Um, Steve Connor would yeah, be one of the best veterans agents in the state. Yeah. So. The only thing that uh, the only thing that the gentleman was was asking is that the locations that we plant the trees, we plant them in groups. Oh. Which is already our model to begin with. Yeah. Uh, you know, three to four trees in groups in places that were uh, higher profile where people would actually walk and actually see who they're dedicated to. Um, it also made me start to think about the fact that we have touched, talked about the uh, putting a policy together uh, for memorial tree plantings. So that this might be the impetus to take a look at that again and maybe see if we can borrow some language from somewhere that has already been vetted and actually adopted. College does it's a policy. Yeah, Smith College does, Little Park does. So uh, and get the mayor to approve the policy, the review of policy that we would use, the okay, policy that we would use that would probably go in the back of our language book or in our policy book whenever we get on. Yeah, I mean I definitely see that as a goal. I just don't with like prioritizing yeah. our 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 tasks, I see that as slightly further down. I totally get that. I'm just trying to maybe think about that. Yeah. I think we can manage to place 50 trees on the very easily. By using the plant location of trees, we can also have to scout our locations. Okay, that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. So I don't see anything on the web at this point. Regarding that, is there anything you need to do, Rich? No, I, I just, the mayor and I had the meeting with the gentleman, and the mayor asked, the mayor committed to 50 trees. Uh -huh. So it's uh, another way to make, uh, you know, either add 50 more trees to our, um, you know, yearly planting projects, or absorb it in. Uh, yeah, yeah, just absorb it somehow. So, and the great part is that they're not going to, you know, not going to say you have to get all the ash trees. So I explained to him about climate change and, um, and what the commission, was, the commission was trying to do. The gentleman was great, so I hope that I run into other municipalities that have this kind of a program. Yeah. If there are 53 all at once at a certain time, is that? No, 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 not necessarily. It's going to be basically, they're just, basically in a nutshell, it's going to be, we're going to, 
the way they like to see it is they don't want to be involved in picking the trees. They don't. All they want to do is put our right, put our right to check to the money and, and give us the dog tag. And be assured that we're going to. Yes. And the other, the big, the other good piece about this is that he said we're not going to leave it high and dry in the lurch either. He said we want to provide the city with aftercare money for the oh, good. Good. trees. So that would help if there was a, a tree failure and we had to do a replacement or mm -hmm. some kind of damage of some sort. When do we think we might start getting this tree? I probably will know more about it probably in January, February. Oh, but the, in 2018? Yes, the spring of 18. Yeah, that would be the goal. At least plant some so of the trees. So that would be an amazing arboretum project. Yes, in front of Park Street Cemetery. My goal is to take the fence down and plant some trees in their fence. Uh -huh. I'd love to see veterans and children doing this together. Yeah, yeah. 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 that would be an um, you know, you know what? That just reminds me. I have a little bit of a nagging conscience here, and that is that, that we we informed Ned Huntley's family that we planted a tree in his honor, and we have not done that. Sure. And I would just like us to prioritize that and do that, and let them know where we planted it, or if we're going to plant it the day, allow them to be there. I don't have a problem with it. The anniversary of his passing is coming up. What about Not off the top of my head. The site that we have, the one site that we have in front of the BWF. That's a tree. Didn't he pass just a part Charles of the job? Charles Park does that. I'm not sure. I don't know that we have to tie it to that. I, I um, But I, I would just, you know, I would just like to get it in the ground. You know, there, you know there's a string of um, pin oaks along the, uh, the side of DPW, the transfer station? Yes. Isn't there still a space for one more? Probably. What about there? I just feel like near the department would be. I, I don't have an issue with it. I guess, I mean, I guess the only thing is that we're going to do a memorial planting that's going to require um, an area to fall. No. Why don't we just outside of that? Just Completely. Just completely. Just say I do. I, I Because I, I, I know this is a sensitive topic, but it's really more about us. And, and it's not like we're going to contact the press or anything like that. Um, do, you, do we have, uh, are there any pin oaks in your inventory? No, I'm wondering, we, you know, I, I mean, I, it's a little bit of a common tree and a little bit of a common spot. Yeah, the, the spot, I agree. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'd like to see a burrow in some place. We have them in the very We have them these burrows, and they're potentially spectacular and large. We might be a memorial tree. We really like to open them. Well, I remember that there are still some more spots at the, um, and, I, and I feel like that once upon a time we talked about planting a tree for Ned here. The, the park in front of the Bridge Street School. What is that park uh, called? Lambert Park. Lambert Park. Yeah, yeah there's this, I was there it's today. There's a bunch of sites. There's this, okay, so there's a row of, London Plain Trees along Bridge yes. Street. And then there's kind of a triangle with one little linden tree kind of in the back part of it that was planted recently. But if you planted a bur oak kind of in that triangle, it would come right out on, on the Bridge Street and kind of over the fence. Do you have a bur oak? Yeah. 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 I and mean, that would be something that people would, you know, that would be an amazing sight. Should we do it? Okay. I, I, um, when do you think we can plant this Like now. It's, it's, in a tree, it's, it's, it's a tree waiting to be planted. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to reach out then to his uh, widow. Something. <laughs> do you know her name? I don't know her name. Rita. 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 A bur oak uh, in Lampin Park in Ned's honor, and um, just wondering, should I say, or I could just say we planted a bur oak in Lampin Park in Ned's honor. I mean, yeah, we could do this that so would quickly. keep it simple. 
That would keep it simple. That would avoid any sort of like suggestion that we're making a, a ceremony out of this. Yeah, because so that's actually what I said I would do. That I said we would plant a tree in his honor. It could be planted in the next two weeks. Okay. It would, it would be planted in the next two weeks. Right, I have a new dig safe list after even the one I just gave you that I'm already making. Or I could get it onto that one. Track the one I have. Okay. Yeah, whatever we'll talk about. It. Yeah, it's fine. Does anyone want to be a part of that? Yeah, I might do. Okay. Um, will you send out possible dates? Okay. Uh, we might as well decide now, though, like, is this a weekend and eat after work kind of? Just generally without even a date. What kind of? I like after work. Yeah. After work, okay. I, I just can't do Tuesdays ever. Well, just knowing that after work makes it easier, too. Right. Should have our commission meeting that if there are no more. Mm -hmm. Depending, yeah, I mean, if they You can do it before daylight, so. Yeah, we do it <laughs> All right, good. Well, thank you. I um, I will feel much better when that's in the ground. I can yeah. let her know that we done that. Okay, um, to do. Okay, here we go. Uh, Rich, a cover letter to the Ad commi Committee or Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, ongoing tree removal, including stump removal at the Forbes Library. Um, presentation on tree planting at our next meeting. That works out for you. Uh, contact Allen regarding setback planning, planting. Uh, plant chestnut tree or planned chestnut tree planting at Bridge Street Cemetery and that's all I have. Uh, Lily contact Wally uh, regarding sources of funding for professional assistance. Uh, draft reply uh, declined to Conway School uh, and share that with Rich. We have a subcommittee meeting on Thursday at 26. Follow up is that about chestnut tree planting? And reach out to Ned's widow regarding the tree planting in Park. Uh, Todd, update the tree ordinance in Center Ridge, clarify language regarding the right of way tree planting. Download, review the traffic common manual, and plan chestnut tree planting at Fitzgerald Lake. Uh, Jay, select the site at Charles Park before it closes next week, and plant the chestnut tree planting there. Uh, Jen, complete the tree list. Guide Marilyn, I'm going to draft the overview of our five point um, tree planting plan and have that ready for our next meeting and attend the second meeting on the 26th. Um, also, the second meeting on the 26th, and Rob organize the tree planting for me. And um, do you also have ongoing tree planting in general? Yes. Yeah, sorry. The South Street update. Well, this weekend. Did I miss anything? Did you mention the tree planting for Fort Black or just the ongoing work? Oh, yeah, no, she didn't mention that. Uh, I just oh, put um, removing the stumps. Yeah. Uh, oh, when are you going to plant stairs? Yeah, I, I just, I want to get back to the commission when I have a date. Okay. Okay. Should, we, should we tentatively bookmark the 11th? A lot. That's a Saturday. Yeah, for some reason, yeah. I think it's going to be more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Feels awfully soon. It does. I'm going to get back to it. And they're saying it's all on the They also have to nag to get that. You think November 11th should be planting at 4th? Yeah, I mean, November, I'm getting my November 11th. Where did they come for? It's going to be there are 11 November 8th. Lindens from my students. And then there's about another 10 years. I think I first will grad in the year. Okay. So that would be the two tentative dates. All right. But it's Saturday morning planting. All right. Motion to adjourn this meeting. I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn this meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye.